Hey everyone, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a new visual novel game called Slobbish Dragon Princess. This game was released on Steam on January 29th, 2021. Its regular price is $14.99 US, or your regional equivalent, and it's developed by Whirlpool, who also made the Nekonin X Heart visual novels, and is published by Sekai Project. So basically in this game, you take on the role of Takaru, who, who finds a strange lizard-like being on the side of the road, which turns out to be Princess of the Dragons. Pretty self-explanatory, she's probably going to be lazy. <laughs> so let's let's take a look at the start. Uh, it should be voiced, so that will be excellent. Let's go. Exactly. My childhood friend stood stock still, staring up at the sky. The one utterance that escaped her lips encapsulates the situation perfectly. The state of events was beyond all human comprehension. Ah, dragons. There were countless silhouettes in the sky. Someone in the crowd uttered the key word. Dragons. We all thought them to be nothing but the stuff of fairy tales. The sort of thing you read about in myths or legends. After thousands, tens of thousands of years, they found a place in games or comics. If you are, then so am I. There's probably a better way to phrase it, but my brain just wasn't working. Ah, hello. The little lizard in my arms squirmed about. I changed my grip to keep it still. I'm kind of busy. This is reality. No puking. <laughs> the people from the other houses went out and stared up at the sky as well, just as we were. Uh-oh. Right as Suzuka took a step, she immediately turned around and stared back at me. Not that I was the one who said anything. It wasn't even a voice that you heard, per se. Is it going right into our heads? That's just crazy. I've been raised by my martial artist dad. I think I've gone through my fair share of crap, but I've never experienced this kind of fear before. I was utterly terrified. Ah, Liu. Well, that much was basically spoiled already, so it's not like we were surprised. Like, go figure, right? Friends of yours? The whole time, the lizard in my hands was wriggling restlessly. When I first picked this little thing up from the roadsides, at roadside, I didn't think it looked like a dragon. But I didn't expect actual dragons to show up a few days after that. My life flashed before my eyes just a bit. I recalled my peaceful, lazy days. I remembered when I first met this little critter. I was getting some food. Uh, fishing, actually. <laughs> Crawfish. I could fish some other stuff if I went all the way to the ocean. But I still can't get over how I didn't manage to catch anything the last time. They don't taste half bad, and eating crawfish won't kill me. I'd love to if that's okay. Stuff like this happened every so often, so there's nothing to lose by being nice to the neighbors. Thank you very much. I waved goodbye to Miss Poodle, <laughs> especially if you look at her hair and went on my way. Just a whiff of the stew already got me hungry. I'm chronically hungry, and as for money, well, it's gone to the point where I don't even carry a wallet anymore. Proud pro proletariat here. Even my clothes were nothing but these sweats and another pair. Because I'm a neat. He is a sprightly young neat, apparently. If we were talking about actual titles or accomplishments, I'm an assistant instructor at the dojo, but because I make, like, no money, I'm effectively just a bum. Miyamoto-style Niten Ichiryu brawling. My family's absolute lack of intelligence is evident on the signboard outside. By the way, on the side is written the real deal, but... The actual famous Miyamoto Musashi wasn't a martial artist or a brawler. 
Obviously, there was no actual relation beyond having the same surname. And obviously, I've never actually had anyone under my instruction. Don't talk like I'm some rare species, old friend. We exist here and there. This girl slinging barbs is my neighbor, Ichinosi Suzuka. She's the only daughter of Ichinosi Sweets, a generations old store just beside our dojo. Somehow, somewhere along the way, she took a wrong turn, and now she's a Gyaru. I actually don't know what that one means. Don't talk like that about my crawfish. Just how exactly do crawfish slither? Huh, I'm, I'm gonna eat them. Just whose childhood friend has she been all these years? People all over the world eat crawfish. Just so you know, pretty much the only difference between shrimp and crawfish is the hardness of their shells. She was so ignorant, you wouldn't even believe she was already in college. I'm serious, there's even crawfish dishes in Chinese and French cooking. When we teach you a recipe, just leave them in fresh water for a couple of days so they spit out the mud, then boil them in water and add salt. It's Miyamoto style boiled crawfish. Suzuka, you just don't get it. Just hear me out, I'm a martial artist. I've been learning the law of the fist since I was a kid. And that's how I lived my entire life. I've gotten this strong. The moment I end up getting, doing something else, everything I worked so hard for will end up getting reset back to zero. Got it? Shut up, you old hag. She was right on the bat, though. Okay, let's say I start working in a convenience store. At that point, I'll be valued not on my own strengths, but say, how I work the register, how much I, stuff I eat off the shelves. How could I possibly stand that? If I go down a different path and all my training up till today would have been for nothing. In an ideal world, some rich eccentric falls in love with me and tells me, just be with me, I'll support you for life. <laughs> Who else is there but you? Seems like that old hag long since went off for Pachinko. Wait, are you sure on help? Huh? Me? How? Where? I just said I'm still in the middle of training, you ignorant fool! Whenever Suzuka gets mad, her personality takes a turn for the worse. Much worse. Huh? Quit beating around the bush and tell it to me straight already. That hurts, you know. As tempestuous as always, this woman. Uh, so basically the, the little dragon, Haru or whatever, falls out of the sky. Uh, Takaru scoops it up and he <laughs> he's planning on cooking it. Um, and then Suzuka vetoes the idea and he calls it Haru and keeps it as a pet. So that this is all like prologue of what happened before those dragons invaded. So I just want to get back to the dragons invading. So we're skipping this bit where Suzuka says, don't eat it, keep it as a pet. Even Haru slowly turned into me, a lazy bum. Well, whatever, might be nice to go out alone for once. I had a really weird feeling after I headed outside. I looked up at the sky, down, and back up again just to be sure. The color of the sky really was... I couldn't quite put 
couldn't quite put my finger on what exactly, but something felt off. <laughs> what a horrifying sounding dog. Even Rocky, that's the neighbor's dog, especially bred to be quiet and obedient, was barking from anxiety. Yeah, rain dragons, maybe. The old lady who just exited Ichinose Suites mentioned that to her friend as they briskly walked into the distance. Really hope it doesn't rain. If it does, it would be risky to go fish for crawfish. Nothing I can do about that, though. Guess I'll go spend actual money to buy food. All I had was 620 yen, but I would finger figure something out. Alright, the old man hasn't come back recently. Nothing new, though. Now Haru started squirming about. Hey, don't just brush it off like that. Though there certainly was some kind of hubbub going on. Dragon invasion. In my arms, Haru pawed at my chest. It was like she was asking us to go outside. And then we saw. Countless silhouettes blacked out the entire sky. They were winged beings, but the wings that fluttered were totally different from that of a bird's. Although it was the first time I'd seen them, I could easily recognize them. We already knew what they were. Dragons. Is that a fighter jet that flew overhead? Not a single person knew what was going on, which is exactly why Hysteria began to take a hold of people. Run? To where? I wasn't talking to him in particular. The words simply found their way out. The shock might have been so extreme that I'm now totally cool and collected. Dragons, huh? It was as if the entire world as I knew it was flipped on its head. For some reason, my fear had faded away. After everything that had happened, there was just a certain kind of amazement left in me. We can't win against that. Oh, that, that just slipped out. Well, facts were facts. There wasn't anything I could possibly do against them. So like, yeah guys, go ahead. An eardrum destroying explosion ripped through the air. God, those things haven't even done anything yet and people are already messing everything up. Indeed, those dragons hadn't done anything, but looked down on us from up above. There hasn't even been anything since that voice in our heads. How's Akinoa-san? Not like I could think of anything better to do, so I just nodded along. I looked up at the sky behind us. Something just caught my eye. Suzuka got upset at that. They look really strong. They were beautiful. If I said that out loud, though, I wouldn't hear the end of it from her, so I kept it to myself and followed along. Quit squirming, Haru, come on. This feeling. One hour. She was talking like a teacher who waited for the classroom to quiet down. No point in me quieting down, though. あなた方人類の傲慢の象徴とも言うべき数々の武力を用いた者たち。嘆き、絶望することで現実から逃避した者たち。己を脇まえてその場に膝をつき、今なお我らに祈りを捧げている一部の者たちだけに、わずかな見
私たちにとっては等しく無意味無価値ということです This very moment, a silence permeated through every single place all over the world as if time had stopped entirely. It was like a wake. We are the people. あなた方は最も集会な形で発展を遂げてしまった。我らへの信仰心は消え失せ、謙虚さを失い、同じ人類の間ですら取るに足らない理由で争い合う。なんとおぞましい執着点でしょうか。私たちは改めて理解し、同時に責任を痛感しました。あなた方人類は、猿のままであるべきであった。余計な知恵を与えたこと。期待をかけたこと、すべてが私たちの落ち度に他なりません。あなた方人類に、この豊かな星は過ぎたるもの。つきましては、以後、人類はあなた方の言葉で言う家畜として、私どもが管理します。What a bizarre, what a bizarre start to this story. It's taken forever to get to this point as well, by the way. I'm pretty sure afterwards. It's just like a slice of life game with the dragon princess being there. <laughs> I think this is like not really representative of the, the, the main tone of the game. <sighs> Suzuka finally blinked her wide open eyes. She then looked at me quivering. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of the way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of the way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of the way. I don't know if I'm going to Oh my god, please get on with it. <laughs> Fuck me. Suzuka pulled on my sleeve and then. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Some of the people who had been staring blankly at the sky began to fall into the ground one by one. It was a simple choice that was easy to understand and to accept. Beings calling themselves gods appeared from the sky, showing their inhuman knowledge and miraculous powers to us. We were nothing but insects to them. What good would resisting against them do? <laughs> Suzuka? Hey, relax. She clung on to me. <laughs> Look, I can get where you're coming from, but hey, where are you going? About what? Wait, hang on, just hold up a second. Do you understand what's going on? God, I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, finally. <laughs> yeah, it'll be okay. Hmm? What will? It'll be okay? From just below my chin, a light shone, expanding until everything went white. I'd been carrying Haru, but at some point what I'd been holding turned into thin air. She's here! In the blink of an eye, 
A figure appeared in the very space in front of us. We were both speechless. It, she, seemed to be a hybrid between a dragon and a human. She turned her back to us, as if to show off her majestic wings and stout tail. Is that you, Haru? I found myself uttering that, only because her wings and tail seemed so familiar. The girl remained silent. Instead, the corners of her lips turned to a smile. Haru! Whoa, she is actually a dragon. <laughs> Just how many times today have I seen Suzuka staring up into the sky with her mouth hanging open in disbelief? It seems so to me, at least. Just after Suzuka's re rejoinder, that strange feeling of hearing their voices directly in my mind vanished. Looks like it. I looked around just to be sure, and Taro was no longer anywhere to be seen. Okay, I've been recording for like 40 minutes, and I want to stop. <laughs> Um, it's an interesting idea for a game, but the preamble is way too long. Uh, like, the game's only 15 bucks, so it can't be that long, and, like, the whole first hour is just preamble, which seems, like, quite unrelated. Um, basically, Haru persuades the dragons not to enslave them, as you could probably guess. Um, and then she joins the protagonist in his neat lifestyle. And that's the actual game. So, um, I think they could have cut a lot of bullshit from this. <laughs> from the start of the game. I mean, I'm sure the, the rest of the game's fine. A more slice of life-y. But to take up the whole first hour with something that's not going to be like the rest of the game is really weird. They, they really didn't need a lot of, like, him picking crawfish and shit like that and... I, I probably cut out a lot, um, but yeah, I did record this for 40 minutes before I got to this point, and I was skipping a lot as well. Anyway, that was a, a look at the start of Slobbish Dragon Princess. Like I said, this is not um, indicative of what the rest of the game will be like, so that's uh, a bit annoying, having just sat through doing this for 40 minutes and it won't be like the rest of the game, so that's awesome. Alright, thank you guys very much for watching, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!